the morning. Today I'm going to ride along the new bike path that goes between Taralga and Morwa. The trail starts or ends at the, the aquatic centre in Taralga and heads up this beautiful hill in between the trees as they change colours for autumn. This weaves its way down through the nature strip between the two roads. Exercise park, exercise equipment along the way. A little bit bouncy from the tree roots, but it's all sealed here. It's incredible. It's good. It's a lovely ride, gently downhill from here. There are also quite a few, or a few water stations along the way to refill your bottles, where your dog can get some water and you can get some water. They're conveniently placed, but I'd suggest that you do take water with you, at least one bottle. It's a really good day for a ride. And I'm finally almost out from underneath the power station cloud, which has this awful sulfuric smelling fallout. And it's just falling out all over Taralgan this morning. Uh, I'll show you where I am now, going in between the fields. How's that? It's so nice and flat. Got a bit of a breeze. I haven't had a look to see what the wind is doing today, but it doesn't matter, it's not doing much at all. That's a power station over there, Luoyang, and there's another power station over there. That's what this area in the Gippsland is all about at the moment, power stations and coal mining. Uh, they are closing down, slowly, slowly. As people are realizing that renewables are the way to go, uh, we're not needing these power stations so much and eventually all these power stations in Gippsland will, will won't be needed anymore eventually in my lifetime hopefully the last month or so, last couple of months, in uh, Gunai Kurnai Nation, uh, which I've just discovered is divided into five different clans across the, the Gippsland region. And they have their own creation story, which is really, it's a really, really cool one. I'll read it out to you. Read along. The first Gunai Kurnai came down from the mountains in the northwest carrying his canoe on his head. He was born to Pelican. He crossed over the tribal river by what is now Sail and walked on alone to Tara Warakal, Port Albert, in the west. As he walked, he heard a constant tapping sound but could not identify it. 
When he reached the deep water of the inlet, Hurun put down his canoe and much to his surprise, there was a woman in it. <laughs> she was Duk, the master duck. He was very happy to see her and she became his wife and the mother of us all, the Gurnai Gurnai people. There they are. Aren't they a lovely couple? Another really useful uh, piece of information to learn is uh, traditional bush foods uh, and medicines and these are some of the foods that were um, used by the Gurnai Kurunai nation and uh, everyone loves pig face if you haven't eaten pig face fruit you're, you're missing out I haven't tried this one yet but I've been looking out for it hoping to find some and the yam daisy this is the flower and the root actually quite nice it's not too bad at all. A bit starchy, potato-ish, oh, yummy. It's a yam. There you go. I have tried the bogong moth before I went vegetarian, and it's nutty, uh, oily and nutty, but it's actually pleasant to eat. There are plenty of other plants that you can eat around. When the First Nations, Aboriginals in Australia killed an animal, they used all of it. They didn't waste any of it. This bit here is for myself, <laughs> for future reference. Right. Yeah, I know this one, tea tree. Cuts, bruises, sprains, blisters and grazes. Woolly tea tree, old man weed. River mint for coughs, colds, chest infections. I didn't know that. And I have no idea what the cacala plant is, but I'll have to look that one up now. Yes, I've heard of this. Using bull ants, pincers, to, to suit your guts. I, no, I haven't tried that, but I know how to do it if, I, if it ever comes to it. And our poultices with bottle bark. The track has lots of little places to stop along the way. This one has a nice little view. The dam. Plantation. Lovely seat to rest on. You could say it's a blooming good view. And I'm back. That was a fantastic ride. It took about four, three hours to ride to Morewell and uh, do a couple of extra tracks in around Morewell area, the wetlands and the heritage trail, and uh, then ride back. It was a perfect day. Uh, it's not too hot, the sun came out, there are a few hills on the track, um, and uh, a few people using it as well. So it was a great track, I highly recommend it.